elephants and Africa's geography. First, explore the habitation of this vast continent in Africa's geography. Next, travel to the middle of Africa to see the mighty African elephant. Then, journey to India to learn about a female elephant handler and her Asian elephants. Segment 1. Africa's Geography. Africa is one of the Earth's seven continents. It is a huge continent with one-fifth of the world's land area. In the north, Africa is bound by the Mediterranean Sea, on the east by the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean, and on the west by the Atlantic Ocean. In the north, Africa is the world's largest desert, the Sahara, which runs almost coast to coast. It hardly rains here, and not many people or animals make their homes in this dry region. Most of the people living to the north of the Sahara are Arabic-speaking, while most people living to the south of the Sahara speak many different dialects. Below the Sahara, the country receives more rain, and there are vast grassland called savannas. Here, cattle-raising tribes tend their herds. In the northeast corner runs Africa's longest river, the Nile. It begins in Lake Victoria and flows north to the Mediterranean Sea. Africa is divided in half by the equator. To the west lies a dense rainforest. Close to 40 inches of rain fall on this forest every year, making it a lush and humid home for some of Africa's large and varied wildlife. Further east, along the equator, lies the Great Rift Valley. It is a 9,600-kilometer trend that extends from Lebanon to Mozambique. The valley was created by ancient volcanic activity and the sinking of the Earth's crust. Here is Africa's largest lake, Lake Victoria, and its highest mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro. The grasslands here contain large herds of wild animals, such as elephants, zebras, and antelope, as well as predators that hunt them, like lions and cheetahs. Just below the equator is the Kalahari Desert. While this region is very dry, it receives more rain than the Sahara Desert. Africa is divided into over 50 countries, the most of any continent. The country of Egypt rests along the Nile in the northeast. Kenya and Tanzania are in the east. South Africa sits at the southern tip of the continent, and on the west coast lie Nigeria and Gabon. Draw a pie chart that shows the proportion of Africa's land area to the rest of the world. Segment 2, African Elephants. are elephants, and there is no other animal in the world that looks like them. They are the largest animals that live on land. Only a few kinds of whales are bigger. Only the giraffe is taller. The elephant is the only animal that has a long nose called a trunk, and it has the biggest teeth. Those two white tusks sticking out of its head are actually extremely long upper teeth.
There are two kinds of elephants, African elephants and Asian elephants. This is the African kind. It is easy to tell the two apart. African elephants are larger, heavier, and have bigger fan-shaped ears. They live as far west as Guinea, across to Somalia, and down to South Africa. Male African elephants can grow to about three meters high and weigh up to 5,000 kilograms. The first thing you notice about an elephant is its trunk. It is actually a long nose and upper lip. The elephant uses it to do many things. Breathing, smelling, touching, feeding, and drinking. It is very strong and flexible. With it, an elephant can lift a log that weighs up to 300 kilograms or pick small leaves from a tree. Elephants also use their trunks to communicate. Touching each other's trunks is another way of saying hello or greeting one another. Young elephants use their trunks when they are playing. Elephants have poor eyesight and rely on their sense of smell to alert them to danger. This is why the trunk is always in motion, sweeping the ground and air. It is searching not just for food, but for enemies as well. Both male and female African elephants have tusks. Tusks are made out of a bony material called ivory. They are actually very large front teeth, and they keep growing as long as the elephant lives. Elephants use their tusks for fighting. And digging for food and water. Tusks grow to an average of two meters and weigh about 90 kilograms. Sometimes you'll see one tusk that is longer than the other. When digging in the ground for roots and plants, an elephant will favor one side more than the other depending upon whether it is left or right-handed. This activity results in one tusk growing longer than the other does. Elephants are very social animals. They live in herds of 15 to 30 or more. A herd is actually one large extended family. It is made up of adult females, all of whom are related and calves of various ages. All the females help out in raising each other's children, and if necessary, they will adopt orphans. Their leader is usually an older female called a matriarch. Females stay together all their lives. An elephant can live to be 65 to 70 years old. When male elephants become adults, they leave the herd and live alone, or with other males. Occasionally, they will return for visits. When two or more adult males join the herd, they are likely to start fighting. They use their herds and trunks to pull and push each other until one of the males injures the other or chases him away. Elephants keep growing as long as they live. That means that the older the elephant is, the bigger it is. Also, the males grow more than the females. So full-grown males are usually much larger than females of the same age. Elephants eat plants, and because they are so big, they need a lot of food. They have to spend many hours a day feeding. A large adult will eat about 200 kilograms of plants and drink 200 liters of water in a day. Elephants do not have permanent homes. They move from place to place in search of new supplies of food and water. 
The matriarch leads the way on these migrations, and the herd follows single file. Elephants have large brains and are famous for their excellent memories. The matriarch seemed to be the keeper of knowledge for the whole herd. She remembers where the good feeding grounds are and how to get there. Elephants like to take baths in lakes and rivers and do so almost every day. They also love to roll around in muddy waters. They have no sweat glands, so the water and the mud help keep them cool. Some elephants are good swimmers. They will stay in deep water for hours, holding up their trunks for air. Elephants drink by sucking water into their trunks and then squirting it into their mouths. They also take showers by spraying themselves with water. Female elephants can give birth once every four or five years. This baby elephant is about a day old. A newborn is generally about one meter long and weighs 90 kilograms or more. It is able to walk after about an hour. Babies have to be able to travel with the herd very soon because lions and leopards love to feast on small elephants. Right now, it is covered with a layer of woolly hair, but it will lose most of that as it gets older. Elephants are sometimes called perchiderms. This word comes from the Greek word meaning thick-skinned. The height around the shoulder of an adult is about four centimeters thick. Despite their great weight, elephants walk without making any noise. They have thickly padded feet, which act like cushions and absorb the impact. An elephant's walk is really a shuffle. Because of the way their legs are designed, elephants cannot gallop or jump. They walked at about seven kilometers an hour, but when they become frightened or angry, they can charge up to 40 kilometers per hour for short distances. These are forest elephants. They are the smaller version of the bush elephant that roams the African plains. Nearly half of the elephants in Africa live in its forest. These animals play an important part in the life of the jungle. They dig through the soil uprooting trees and creating open areas that let in the sun. Plants grow in these clearings, and other kinds of animals come to feed there. Also, as the elephants migrate through the jungle, they make paths, which are then used by people and animals. Elephants have no natural enemies, except humans. Because of people, elephants have now become an endangered species. In 10 years, the number of African elephants has been cut in half. Hunters are killing elephants in the wild for their ivory tusks. Thousands of elephants have been killed. Now there is a worldwide ban against the sale of all elephant products, such as hide, hair, and ivory. Both elephants and humans face a threat to their safety when their territories overlap. Elephants need a lot of land to roam around in search of food and water. And these safe areas are not large enough to hold many of them. In order to survive, humans also use many of these areas for farming and living places. Some people are trying to find ways to peacefully share these areas of land with the elephants. Unless more space is set aside for them and the poaching is stopped, African elephants may become extinct in the wild 
within the next 10 or 20 years. Fortunately, conservation groups around the world are working to save the elephant. If the average elephant weighs 5,000 kilograms, how many of you would it take to weigh the same as an elephant? Segment 3, Asian Elephants. This is the story of an extraordinary woman. Her name is Parvati, and she's known as the Queen of the Elephants. The story begins in India a country with a tradition of training and caring for elephants that is thousands of years old. That is where this man is traveling. His name is Mark Shend. He is a writer from England and has come to India to learn about Parvati and her elephants so that he can tell their story. He will join Parvati and her elephants in their camp and on their yearly journey east. Parvati is a mahout, or elephant handler. She is the only female mahout, for it is traditionally a male job. Parvati learned everything she knows about elephants from her father, who was one of the greatest mahouts in India. Now Parvati teaches others to become elephant handlers. She will teach Mark as much as possible during their journey, for it takes many years to learn all that poverty knows about elephants. It is important for the elephant and the mahout to be friends and to trust each other. In camp and on their journey, everything revolves around the well-being of the elephant. In India, many people's livelihood depends on trained elephants. Elephants are used to gather timber from the forest and to keep wild elephants from wandering onto farms and eating the crops. Without the mahouts and their elephants, many farmers would lose their crops. In camp, the day begins at 4 o'clock in the morning. You wake up and 3,600 kilograms of hungry elephant is waiting for you. It's time to head out to the forest for food. An elephant eats 250 kilos of green plants each day. The mahouts ride the elephants into the forest to feed and to gather food for elephants back at the camp. Over the years, mahouts have learned much about medicinal plants from the elephants. They observe the plants a sick elephant eats to get better. The mahouts also make special food for the elephants to be sure that they get all the nutrition they need. A mixture of boiled wheat and salt is wrapped in huge leaves. This food is good for the elephant's stomach. Each elephant eats 200 of these a day. One of the most crucial tasks of a mahout is bathing the elephant. Elephants need to spend at least two hours a day in water cooling down and cleaning themselves. This is a very important time between the elephant and the mahout. It lets the mahout closely examine all parts of the elephant to see how healthy it is and it helps to strengthen the relationship between them. There is a great deal of trust between the mahout and the elephant, especially at this point, because an elephant is most vulnerable lying down. The elephant cannot get up quickly to defend itself, 
and depends on the mahout to look out for both of them. The mahout must be careful not to touch the elephant's spine, for it's very sensitive. They gently splash water on the elephant's back. Now that Mark knows enough about the care and feeding of elephants, the journey can begin. But first, they must hold a poo jar. In India, every journey begins with a poo jar, a ceremony to ask for blessings and to ensure good luck on the trip. Parvati asks the gods for guidance and protection on their journey and for forgiveness for any mistake they may have made. Now it is time to pack. Great care must be taken when packing an elephant. You cannot simply throw things on their backs. Elephants may appear strong, but if you pack things on them incorrectly, you may harm them. The first thing you must put on an elephant is a quilted pad. On top of that goes a large saddle. All of this is strapped onto the elephant with one piece of strong, thick rope. Elephants can carry up to 900 kilograms, but the weight must be packed correctly and distributed evenly to prevent damage to the elephant's back. A back injury can permanently disable an elephant. Mark and Poverty climb onto their elephants, and the journey begins. They follow their migratory path that Indian elephants have taken for thousands of years, passing through the sub-Himalayan tracks and forests that cross northeast India. The view from an elephant, about four meters up, is quite spectacular. You can see both far and near. It is a good time to appreciate the scenery around you. Elephants don't have sweat glands. They flap their huge ears to cool themselves. In fact, elephants that live in the wild are mostly nocturnal animals. Nocturnal animals are animals that are active at night. Wild elephants spend most of their daytime in the cool shades of the forest and come out only at night. Six kilometers an hour is a good pace for an elephant. In order to make progress on a journey, you must start at dawn and add at mid-morning before the heat becomes too much for a man and elephant. To travel 32 kilometers a day is very good progress. You learn to be patient and enjoy the trip. As Parvati and Mark travel across India, the people they meet along the way are happy to see them and the elephants. Elephants have been revered and respected by the people of India for thousands of years. Many people come to greet the elephants, some even give them food. There are hundreds of different deities or gods in India. One of them is Ganesh, the god of beginnings and of protection. Ganesh is always portrayed with the head of an elephant. When people show respect for elephants, they are also showing respect for the god Ganesh. Although people of India honor and respect the elephant, there is a growing problem between man and elephant. As the country of India develops economically and the number of people increases, more and more space is needed for people and less space is left for the elephants. Also, as the number of people grows, the amount of wood they need grows too. As more and more forests are cut down for wood and to clear land for farms, the forest area left for the wild elephant to feed on becomes smaller and smaller. Elephants are very large creatures. They are the largest creatures that live on land. They need a lot of space and food. If too much of the forest in India are cut down, there will not be enough forest for the elephants to survive. The problem of space for people and elephants is not just a concern for the country of India. 
all countries need to find a way to have enough room for both people and animals to survive. The journey continues. They travel north towards the eastern Himalayan mountains. During the summer months, on their annual migration, the elephants like to climb into the valleys to escape the heat and the flies and to enjoy the plentiful food and water. Considering their shape and size, you might think that elephants would have a difficult time walking in the hills and valleys. In fact, elephants are excellent climbers. They can negotiate steep slopes and have been known to reach altitudes of over 2,000 meters. Mark and Poverty leave the valleys and head south through the thick forest across the plains. They are nearing the end of their journey. After three months and 500 kilometers, their journey ends at the banks of the river Sangosh. It's been a great trip, one that has taught Mark a lot about elephants and giving him a wonderful story to tell. A story about a very special woman and the magnificent creatures in her care. Perhaps if you all care for the creatures in our world, the problem of space for animals and men will be solved. Write a poem of eight lines describing your thoughts about an elephant. Use a variety of descriptions. Give the poem your own title.